Before we do number eight, let's talk about how you create a function given its roots. Let's say that we know that the roots of a polynomial function are x equals negative one, x equals one, and x equals negative two. We also know that it's a third degree polynomial. That means the highest exponent is going to be x to the third. And the last thing they gave us is that f of two is negative 24. So we'll first start by constructing the factors that would come from these three zeros. So if x is negative 1, that would come from x plus 1. If x equals 1, that would come from x minus 1. And if x equals negative 2, that would come from x plus 2. Now each of these is a factor of the polynomial if these are roots of the polynomial. And since they're factors of the polynomial, I know that I need to multiply them to find the polynomial. If I multiply these first two, I get x squared minus x plus x minus 1 and then I multiply that still by x plus 2 and combining like terms these two terms will add to 0 so I'll end up with x squared minus 1 times x plus 2 now if I continue to multiply, distribute x squared first and then minus 1, I get x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And that is a third degree polynomial function. However, remember the other piece of information they gave us, which is f of 2 has to come out to negative 24. So let's see what happens when we put a 2 in here. 2 to the third plus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 minus 2 gives me 8 plus 2 times 4 minus 2 minus 2 which is 8 plus 8 minus 2 minus 2 that's 16 minus 2 minus 2 which is 14 minus 2 which is 12. Now, I was supposed to get negative 24. So what that means is, to get a negative 24 from a 12, I have to multiply it times a negative 2. So I need to take every term here and multiply it by a negative 2, and I'll have my function. So my function, f of x, would be negative 2 times everything I got, so that's x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And that would give me negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. And that would be my final function. Now, if you were to solve this, you know it would have up to three roots. Those three roots would come out to be the three that we were given here. And if you plug in two into this function, you would get negative 24.
So that's our final function. Now we'll do a process similar to this to do number 8, but there's one thing you need to know, and that is the principle of complex roots. Okay, Complex roots are what you get when you get a square root of a negative, so that means that you got some real number plus some number with an imaginary unit. You had to take the square root of a negative. Well, here's the principle, that if a plus bi is one of the roots, a minus bi is also a root. That complex roots come in what we call conjugate pairs. Okay? So some examples of that. If you solve and you get x equals 3i, that means that x also equals negative 3i. If you solve and you get x equals 6 plus 2i, that means that x would also, for that same polynomial, have to be 6 minus 2i. Okay? So we'll use this principle of conjugate pairs for complex roots to do numbers 8, 9, and 10. So, in number 8, they tell us that the degree of our polynomial is 3. That means our highest exponent will be x to the third. They tell us that 4 is a 0, 5i is a 0, and what they don't tell us is that negative 5i must also be a 0 because conjugate roots come in pairs. If 5i is a root, then negative 5i has to be a root as well. Since this is to the third degree, third power, we know now that we have the three roots, we can write our function. Please note, they also tell us that f of negative 1 is negative 260. And we won't use that until the very end. So they're telling us x is 4, x is 5i, x is negative 5i. So what this tells me is that x minus 4 is a factor, x minus 5i is a factor, and x plus 5i is a factor. So if I multiply these, I'm going to do the conjugates first. So that's going to give me x squared. And look, the plus 5ix and the minus 5ix are going to add to 0. So that's minus 25i squared. And hopefully you remember that i squared has a value negative 1. So I'm going to replace the i squared with a negative 1. And what you'll see then is that this negative and negative make a positive. So what I really have is x squared plus 25. Now I need to multiply x minus 4 times x squared plus 25, and that's going to give me x cubed plus 25x minus 4x squared minus 100. I'm going to put this in the proper order, standard form. So my x cubed is going to come first, my minus 4x squared next, plus 25x minus 100. Now they told me f of negative 1 needs to come out to negative 260, otherwise I'm going to have to adjust um, by multiplying through by something. So let's put in negative 1, negative 1 cubed 
minus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 25 times negative 1 minus 100. So that gives me negative 1 minus 4 times 1 minus 25 minus 100. Negative 1 minus 4 minus 25 minus 100 is negative 130. Now that's not negative 260. I would have to multiply this by 2 to get this, so my polynomial has to be multiplied by 2. So my final answer is f of x equals 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 50x minus 200. Now if you put in negative 1, it would come out to negative 260 because we've multiplied all of these by 2. And this is my final answer for number 8.